Welcome to another IFL Science interview. Today we're going to be talking to author Professor Bob Coca about his work on the new book, Quantum in Pictures. Thank you, Professor. Um, can I ask you to tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and a little bit about this book uh, and the motivation behind it? Okay, so myself, um, I was a professor at Oxford, Oxford University for a long time, till uh, two years ago. I've been at Oxford University for 20, some 20 years. Now I'm the chief scientist of Quantinium, uh, which is a large quantum computing company. And uh, recently also I became a distinguished visiting research chair at the Perimeter Institute, so uh, which is also a nice thing to have. And this book is very much intertwined with the work I've been doing for the past 20 years, effectively. So a lot of it at the Oxford University. So, I mean, as, as you explained, what is this book about? It's on the one hand a way to try to explain cutting edge quantum concepts to, to the masses, to everybody, like uh, by taking away the mathematics background. But at the same time, it's, it, it's a tool or a, a, a way of doing things, which is now widely spread in uh, quantum technology, in quantum industry. So lots of uh, major companies are now using it and it's becoming increasingly widespread. Uh, so, so, so one important thing to say here is these pictures, they're not illustrations. They're not sort of like, uh, popularizations of the usual maths. They're pretty hardcore maths in their own right, although they don't look like that. But but in a way, uh, there is a field of maths which is considered probably the most abstract field of math called category theory. Mm -hmm. And, and in, in due to very recent results, people have discovered that you can actually translate some things in category theory, which is supposed to be very abstract maths, to this kind of pictures you find in the book. So it's it's more rigorous than anything you'll ever read, <laughs> which is which is a, a funny duality. You can explain it to everybody, and it's super rigorous. That is fantastic. Uh, before in before we go on to uh, the popular uh, science side of things, uh, um, how has this uh, formalism, uh, how this um, that is called quantum picturalism, uh, that you came up uh, in two thousand and nine? How is that impacting quantum computing and the quantum information fields? Uh, how are you using this uh, very rigorous formalism to um, deal with uh, these emerging uh, uh, fields uh, of quant in quantum computing? So, so this story has a very long history. In a way, in a way, I got involved in these pictures. 20 years ago, it's when I wrote the paper Quantum Pixelism, it was, it's what, it's when it was sufficiently mature to give it the mm -hmm. name. <laughs> Let's put it like Fair that. Enough. But before that, there were already six years, it was already six years in the making. And then in a way, it goes even much further back to the 1930s, when John von Neumann, who is the father of the modern computer, uh, who's also the father of the usual language of quantum mechanics, which is called Hilbert space. He actually re rejected his own formula very early on and said, we need something new because this, this thing which everybody's using is not a natural language for quantum. Just to give you an analogy, you can program with zeros and ones. It's in mm -hmm. principle possible, but it's not the natural language for programming. Nobody's yes. going to do that. And it, it's a similar analogy. Can we come up with something like modern programming language or the analog? like the interface of your iPhone, which is kind of programming, can we come up with the same thing for quantum mechanics? That's kind of how it started, as a better formalism. And then after a lot of work and a lot of work and many years and many, many new ideas needed and many people involved, we got to what you now find in the book. Uh, for a while, it was a bit hard to sell to the mainstream community because they couldn't believe that something which looked so silly could actually be useful. There was like an ego thing going on. How can this be useful? But then, then the, uh, now very many important, difficult problems in quantum technology, the best way to solve them is using this stuff. And I, these are very practical things. Like you've got a very big program you want to stick in on a quantum computer. How can you make it as small as possible? Which is a very sort of engineering thing, you know? And people use these pictures for that. For example, or how do you correct your errors in your programs? Uh, specifically me, myself, and, and, and my team, and that's one of my main activities here at um, Quantinium, we came up with um, 
a new way to do AI and a new way to process human language thanks to these pictures. Hmm. This is like a completely different story. You won't find this in the book, but this is exactly something which came out of it. And the field is called quantum natural language processing. It's one of the big promising areas in quantum computing, the new, new because this is quite a new thing from the last few years. So yeah, I mean, it, it's becoming widespread and, and something very nice happened like two weeks ago. Because like I said, the mainstream community was a little bit slow to come on board. And then two weeks ago, we learned that Peter Shore, who basically started quantum computing with what's called the factoring algorithm, an mm -hmm. algorithm for fast factoring. So he's kind of the father of the field. So he's now working also on these pictures and the formalism, and he's advertising them. So the, the father of the entire field is now on our side. <laughs> well, that is quite the endorsement. Uh so, uh, I think we'll cover the technical side. Why, um, what are the motivation for bringing it uh, in a way to the masses? Uh, um, is this um, pictorial language so easy to understand uh, that uh, it's not, you don't need any expertise, everyone can see it? So. In, in, yeah, in principle, yes, that's how we played it. That's how we, that's how we wrote it. You know, before, this is a video interview, I had written another book, which, which, which is like with this nice dodo here. Actually, yeah. I'm wearing the T-shirt here. <laughs> you see, you know so this is a book we had written before, but that's what I had been teaching at Oxford University as mm -hmm. quantum computing for quite a few years before, and that was our course. And that's not something that everybody can read mm -hmm. because we try to also do explain how the usual language goes from the diagrams. Yeah. Well, then, now, I had, I had this idea, and I wrote this in this quantum picture paper from 2009, in order to convince the community that it's a much better language, why don't we teach this to children and show that they can, can do better at exams than university students? And, and, I mean, that idea has been long in my head, and the reason we started to write this book was to do that experiment, because we needed, like, a, a lectures for the children, to, in a way that they understand it. So it, it, it became as like a, tut uh, a tutorial for the exam, but of course then it became a book in its own right. And we are actually now doing this, this, these experiments. We're actually setting them up, showing that uh, teenagers say, with this book and the lectures corresponding to that, can actually do better at an Oxford University exam when their Oxford University, the Oxford University students get the usual quantum mechanical language and not the pictures. That, that is fantastic. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, being able to bring uh, uh, the most advanced aspect of quantum mechanics uh, probably to 10 years earlier to students. That's fantastic. Um, I have just one last question. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm an expert in quantum mechanics, but I've studied for long enough to definitely have fondness for the subject. Uh, um, and I do have a specific favorite concept explained in the book. But what is yours? For me, the favorite, well, I mean, it's very easy to pick. There is only one. For me, the favorite concept is basically what underpins this entire diagrammatic presentation. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a worldview where you care more about how things interact with each other than how things are made up. It's all about how things are related to each other rather than what's inside the thing. And that's kind of a departure of 2,500 year science since the early Greeks, which was then consolidated by Aristotle, that everything you learn in science, for example, in physics, is what is this made up from? What are the small particles? What are the small particles? And not what happens if things start interacting. So that's for me the most, um, and all these wires which you've seen in this book connecting stuff, that's really what this is about. So I think it's an important new paradigm for the whole of society. Wonderful. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time to talk to us uh, about uh, uh, your fantastic book. Thank you so much. <laughs>